proud of our players. The way they responded the last two games, they found a way to win. You know, hats off to the coaches also. You know, you can preach staying on course, you know, but, um, you know, working hard, you know, and making things happen, you know, you, you got to practice that way. You got you to practice to make things happen. And, you know, tell them today, you know, we got we to gotta make sure we're finishing on every play and every drive. And today, you know, at practice, the kids, the kids will, they flew around. They, they got after it. It's a straight, tough Tuesday practice. But we, um, we appreciate the way they came out today. We're going to take a step in, a, in, a, in another direction because we got to play well in all three phases to win this game. It's an explosive offense, a, a team, the quarterback's averaging 300 yards a game, and the defense is top, top 10, top 20 against the rush. I think they're giving up 2.9 yards a rush. But it's a really good football team. It's a, it's a mature football team. They've done a really good job. Brahms has done a really good job of keeping his kids in a program. And I think that's part of having being successful is keeping your kids in the program. Questions? What's the, what's the biggest step you got to take on the O-line? And, I mean, it, it's kind of the personnel you have at this point. Right? Mm-hmm. Or, or what, what, what's your thoughts right now with where you're at, what's got to happen? Well, we, we, you know, we got to get them some help. You know, we got to give them some help with the, with the play calling, with um, protection. You know, all of that. And we got to make sure we, we have our right five, our best five on the field. What's the status of uh, Quentin and Luke? They both look good today, but they'll, they'll, they'll be day-to-day. They'll be day-to-day. How, you know, how, how, how comfortable do you feel with the backup situation there if those two guys either can't go or they, they have to leave the game on Saturday? I have no choice but to feel comfortable. Like I said, when I was in Jersey, we can't play with 10. So I have to I have to feel comfortable with those guys, you know. I I I can't not feel comfortable for them with them, and then they hear what I say in the press, and then they don't go out and play, you know, because y'all gonna print it, you know. So I, and my kids read this stuff, so I got to make sure that they know that I have confidence in them, and they know I do. They know I have confidence in them because we always say next man up. Tommy, Tommy Hill moved over from corner to receiver. Kind of what went into that decision, and is that a permanent? It can be, you know. You, you know, we think we need to get Tommy on the field. You know, he's, he, you know, if you see, you know, he struggled at corner. You know, so we wanted to get him on the field, and he, he was a high school receiver. And so we decided just to move him over and see if he can help us. Coach, how do you kind of coach guys to have a short memory? I mean, to come back from 13 down on the road in the Big Ten says a lot. So, what if, is that something you had to coach them through, or they kind of have a short memory already? No, like I told you, the the the, the, the locker room at halftime. They were kind of coaching us. They were saying that, that we were going to be okay, that they was going to come back and win the game. So what we were doing, we were doing corrections and, and getting the game plan on the board. They was like, no, coach, everything's going to be okay. We're going to come back and win the game. So they had a short memory. They know, hey, we played it. We're going to get it to the full quarter, and then we're going to finish. But they did it on their own. No, it's not an equation. Not this week. Yeah. Not this week. Uh, Gabe Irvin didn't appear in that game. What was the decision? Well, Gabe, we tried to see if Gabe would go. He's, he's got that toe injury. So we tried to see if he we were able to go. And he, he didn't look good in pregame. And one of, my, one of my rules here that the trainer don't tell me that the kid's ready to go. I don't say the kid's ready to go. The position coach don't say he's ready to go. The fans don't say he's ready to go. That kid tells me when he's ready to go. And he said he wasn't ready to go. And that's the way it's going to be, as long as I stand in front of this team. Is there a, on the offensive, back to the offensive line discussion, are you leaving open the possibility that that could be rearranged again? Yes, yes. I mean, 2019 at LSU, we had a different five every week. So, you, you know, with the injuries and everything's going in, going to play right now, so it could be a different five. But we're going to get our best five, though. When you, when you look at that offensive line, what is, when you try to hang your hat on something, what would be their strength? It's really week to week, you know, what, what we need to do to win the game. You know, if we need them to run block to win the game, they're going to run block. But if they, we need them to pass block, they would pass block. And they, they just got to continue to work. But, you know, my thing is I think that they're really good run blockers, but they also can pass block also. 
you know, we've been getting a lot of blitz. They've been heating us up a lot the last two weeks. So we, we're doing a better, we're going to do a better job this week of, of, of ironing out the protection to give them some help. The pass rush kind of showed up there against Rutgers. I mean, how important has it been to rotate those guys, keep them fresh up front? Rot- we always talk about rotating them early and getting them to the full <laughs> quarter so they can be fresh. So Doss did a really good job of rotating those guys. I think he played five edge rushers, you know, and that's, that's, you got to play that when it's 80 snaps, maybe 60 to 80 snaps in a game. If, if you can get a kid in for 10 snaps, that speaks volumes. What's the momentum work? You guys win two in a row, and you're going on the road. How, how do you see that sort of manifest in the week? Well, like you said, we have a 24 hour rule. So we celebrate it for 24 hours. We come in Sunday and we put it to bed Sunday night and we get back on a Monday. So it's, it's, it's about preparing. You know, I, I know we all talk about momentum, but if you played this game, it's really no such thing as momentum because you can have momentum and get your butt whooped, you know. So our, our job is to come back today and start preparing ourselves to go 1-0 this week. Is, is there any value from having one, two in a row just in, in terms of this year and belief and effort? You've been here how long? You, you understand that it's value to it. You understand that? They haven't, been, they haven't done this since 2018, so you know it's value to it. I don't know him personally, but I know he's a really good football coach and he's a really good play caller. He's, and he's doing a really good job over at Purdue. Yeah, how have you seen taking these Mondays now uh, and kind of changing the practice schedule have not only helped your coaches and your preparation for the, the next week, but it's also maybe helped your players' confidence in knowing that the plan is in place and they don't have to come in Monday morning and figure it out? Well, the number one thing they need to do on Monday is get ready for school. That's the reason we took it off. The coaches are going to game plan. They can game plan on Sunday. They can game plan. The number one reason we took Monday off is so they can get their week started with school. Because, you know, remember, we practice in the morning, so they can use Monday to really catch up on homework so when they go into class in the afternoon. But they've been really, they're really, really good with it, and I think they really enjoy coming in on Sundays and putting it to bed and Monday having off where they can get their school work out the way then come in later for all meetings, player-only meetings. But well, it's a veteran staff. They, if they can do it on Sundays, they do a lot of work on Sundays. And Monday, they're just kind of putting the, the, um, the practice schedule together and getting practice together. But they do a lot of work on Sundays. But it helps them. You know, I mean, you not you have to ask the assistant coaches, but I think it helps them. What have you seen on uh, Jock Webb's as uh, you know, possible option along with Anthony Yant at running back? Yes, we like Yant. Yant's, you know, we want Yant to, you know, drop his pads and find a hole. And if there's nothing there, Use the 230 pounds and knock a hole in it. So we, we, we look for big things when Yant goes in the game. And we need Yant to pick it up a little bit when he goes in the game and move the pile. Hey, Mickey, what do you think about the Purdue's quarterback, O'Connell? He's been around, like you said, he's a veteran. What, what impresses you? What jumps out at you when you watch him on tape? He's a six year kid. He's a six year veteran kid. So he's got to be 23, 24 years old. You know, he don't make mistakes. I mean, the ball's always, I always say the ball's always in the area you could. It's always somewhere around the body. But he runs that offense well. He's been there for six years. So he's a really good, he's a really good quarterback. He, he gets them going. What did you think of the, uh, the way your kids handled the atmosphere? Um, it was a pretty decent crowd for Brooke, and now you're going to go sell out. Um, how, do you, how do you think the guys handled that and keeping the boys? Well, I think the boys did a great job at Rutgers with the so-called sellout crowd. Because it wasn't a sellout. Let's be real about it. Okay, let's be real about it. It wasn't a sellout. So we hope in Purdue have a sellout. Okay, we hope Purdue has a sellout because at the end of the day, we, we, we embrace playing in a hostile environment. You know, chaos, we, we embrace that. Control chaos, we embrace that. And the kids, that really, really get their focus. Well, we talked to him about it. nobody's going to win the West October 15th. So it's the, next, it's the next game up. You know, his job is to go 1-0 and this week. But nobody's going to win the West on October 15th. So we're not looking down the line. We're looking at straight at Purdue. So tomorrow practice is the, the most important thing is Wednesday practice. Mickey, how's Casey health wise? And uh, what's your level of concern with some of the shots he's taking? Casey's a tough dude. You know, he's going to take shots. I mean, he plays quarterback, and we drop back, and we move the pocket, but he takes shots. 
You know, I played option quarterback. I took shots, but Casey's Casey's a tough guy. You know, he was on he was on the ground. He said he was a left shoulder. I asked him, I said, you throw with your right shoulder, right? I said, okay, get up. And he got up. Casey's, Casey's tough. Casey's going to be to take those shots and get up. Well, you just say congratulations and, you know, just keep working. He's a good guy. Hey, Mickey, how's uh, Mark Whipple? We saw Mark. He was on a little surgery scooter, scooter uh, over the weekend at Maryland. And had a car trying to take him off. The field. How's Coach Whipple doing? Has he been limited at all with what he's been able to do day to day? No, no. Whipple, Whipple's fine. You know, Whipple's fine. I mean, he's dealing with some things, but it's not getting in the way of him working. You know, he's, you know, shorter for the game. We had to put him on a cart. I mean, Whipple's been coaching like 40-some years. He should get a card if he wasn't dealing with something, you know? So, he, Whipple's okay. Whipple's tough. Whipple's probably tougher, the toughest to do it on the staff. You know, nobody don't mess with Whip, so Whip's okay. I want you to ask him that question, too, so, and, let him, and then let him get after you. <laughs> You know, Bush and Fish is doing a really good job with that back end. They they really clean up the kids' eyes because you're gonna get you're gonna get more picks and zone coverage, and so they clean up their eyes. They're doing a really good job working together. It kind of reminds me of Bush's with Camp Corey Raymond and LSU that the kids are breaking on the ball. They trust in what they see, and they're making plays. Kind of going off that, coach. I mean, spending since the third quarter against Oklahoma, you guys have a lot of points in the second half. So. I mean, that was a problem for this team in recent years. So what's been the change, do you think, that's, that's been more successful just in the third and fourth quarter? Well, we made a change, that defense coordinator. That's the change. So, I mean, you had a guy enter the portal today, but how have you felt about that, just that wide receiver room as a whole and, like, where it is? I, I guess Bonner made the trip, you know, on mm -hmm. Friday. And just kind of what's your assessment of that whole group and what's happened? It's still a strong run. It's still a strong run, you know? I mean... Isaiah has that right, you know. He he wasn't happy. He wanted to, you know, he wanted to be the number one guy, and we couldn't do that for him. But Isaiah's a good kid. He's done everything we asked him to do. But that's the reason they have the portal. I mean, coaches leave all the time. Coaches leave all the time. So when kids, when the kid leave, you can't sit back and be angry at him. You got to say, hey, if I can help you in any way, let me know, because that that's being real. That's being real, not yelling and screaming at them, saying, I want you to stay here. No, if they want to leave, then they have that right to leave. What do you see out of that young Bonner, Bonner just got here? What, what's his potential? Oh, ceiling is high. Kid's going to be a really good football player. But we're going to put him out there when he's ready. One or two more to go. There's a couple more Manning with the on crutches on Friday. What's his? He's, the, he's day to day. You know, he got tackled on an over route. And um, got his ankle caught up in the turf. So he's day to day. We'll see how he is at the end of the week. Coach, back to back second half shutouts. Has there been any thought to black shirts again, or is that still? No. All right. Thank you, Coach. Thanks. Thank you. All right, fellas.